From the tiny pin in your shirt to the tallest skyscraper, minerals are everywhere. They are the foundation of our lives, hidden deep inside the Earth's crust. Minerals are indispensable. Railway lines, machines, cars, buses, aeroplanes, and even the roads we walk on are made from them. The food we eat also contains minerals vital for survival. Heiban, a boy visiting Guwahati, was surprised to see buses and trains. His father explained that unlike their brick houses, these are built with metals like iron and aluminium. and move with engines powered by energy resources. Even our toothpaste is full of minerals. Silica and limestone clean our teeth. Fluoride from fluorite protects against cavities. Titanium oxide makes it white, while mica adds sparkle. Even the toothbrush comes from petroleum-based plastics. Life itself depends on minerals. Though they form just 0.3% of our diet, without them, we cannot use the other 99.7% of food. Calcium, iron, and zinc keep us alive and strong. Geologists define a mineral as a naturally occurring substance with a definite internal structure. From the hardest diamond to the softest talc, their variety depends on the physical and chemical conditions in which they form. Minerals are not scattered randomly in nature. They usually occur in special forms called ores, but only when the concentration of minerals is high enough does it become worth extracting. Let's explore how minerals occur in the earth. In igneous and metamorphic rocks, minerals fill cracks, crevices, and joints. The smaller ones are called veins, the larger lodes. Tin, copper, zinc, and lead are mined this way. In sedimentary rocks, minerals occur in layers formed by deposition over millions of years. Coal and some iron ores formed this way, while gypsum, potash, and sodium salts are found in arid regions due to evaporation. Sometimes, minerals form when surface rocks decompose, leaving ores behind. Bauxite, used for aluminium, is a prime example. Others, like gold, silver, tin, and platinum, are found in alluvial deposits along river valleys, called placer deposits. The oceans also contain vast mineral wealth. Common salt, magnesium, and bromine come from seawater, while manganese nodules are found on ocean floors. In Meghalaya, coal mining is often done in narrow tunnels, called rat hole mining. Though common in tribal areas, it is dangerous and harmful for the environment, and has been banned by the National Green Tribunal. India is fortunate to have diverse mineral resources, though unevenly distributed. Peninsula rocks hold coal, metallic minerals and mica. Petroleum is found in Gujarat and Assam. Rajasthan is rich in non-ferrous minerals, while the alluvial plains of the north are almost mineral poor. From deep veins in rocks to ocean floors, minerals occur in fascinating ways. Their concentration, ease of extraction, and closeness to markets decide whether they become reserves or active mines, fueling our industries and lives. Ferrous minerals form the backbone of India's metallurgical industries. They make up nearly three-fourths of the total metallic mineral production, and India even exports large quantities after meeting domestic needs. Iron ore is the basic mineral and the foundation of industrial development. India is blessed with high-quality deposits. Magnetite, with up to 70% iron content, is the finest ore, used especially in the electrical industry. Hematite, though slightly lower in iron content at 50-60%, is the most widely used. The major iron ore belts of India are concentrated in Odisha, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, and the Maharashtra Goa region. High grade hematite is mined at Badampaha in Odisha and Guanoa Mundi in Jharkhand. In Chhattisgarh, the Bailadilla Hills hold 14 super high grade hematite deposits, famous for their excellent steel making qualities. Much of this ore is exported to Japan and South Korea via Vishakapatnam port. Kudramukh in Karnataka, among the largest deposits in the world, is a 100% export unit. The ore is transported as slurry through pipelines to Mangaluru port. In Goa and Ratnagiri, ores are not of very high grade, but are efficiently mined and exported through Marmagao port. Another vital ferrous mineral is manganese. It is indispensable in steelmaking, 
around 10 kilograms are needed for every ton of steel produced. Manganese also finds use in making ferro-alloys, bleaching powder, insecticides and paints. From iron ore powering steel plants to manganese strengthening alloys, ferrous minerals are the lifeline of India's industries and a key driver of economic growth. Unlike ferrous minerals, India's reserves and production of non-ferrous minerals are not very satisfactory. Yet minerals like copper, bauxite, lead, zinc, and even gold are crucial for our metallurgical, engineering, and electrical industries. India is critically deficient in copper, but this malleable, ductile, and highly conductive metal is essential for electrical cables, electronics, and chemical industries. Bauxite, a clay-like substance, is the chief source of aluminium. It is formed by the decomposition of rocks rich in aluminium silicates. Aluminium is prized for its strength, extreme lightness, high conductivity, and great malleability. India's bauxite deposits are mainly found in the Amarkantak Plateau, Michael Hills, and Bilaspur Katni Plateau. Odisha is the largest producer, with the Panchpatmali deposits in Koraput district being the most important. Beyond metallic minerals, India also produces vital non metallic minerals like mica and limestone. These minerals, though less glamorous, are essential for electricity, construction, and industry. Mika is made up of thin sheets, so delicate that a thousand layers can be stacked into just a few centimeters. It comes in many colors and is prized for its insulating properties, dielectric strength, and resistance to high voltage, making it indispensable in the electronics industry. Limestone, composed of calcium carbonates, is found in sedimentary rocks across most geological formations. It is the basic raw material for cement, and also essential in smelting iron ore in blast furnaces. From copper powering our electronics to bauxite giving us lightweight aluminium, non-ferrous minerals may be limited in reserves, but their role in India's industrial growth is indispensable. Behind the minerals we use daily lies the hard labor of miners. Mining exposes them to dust and noxious fumes, causing lung diseases. Collapsing roofs, flooding and underground fires are constant dangers. The environment also suffers, with polluted water sources, degraded land and dust-filled air. Chota Nagpur Plateau is rightly called India's mineral treasure house with rich reserves of coal, iron ore, mica, bauxite, copper and limestone. Mining has been called a backbone of industry, but without strict safety measures, it risks becoming a killer industry. But here's the reality. Only 1% of Earth's crust contains workable mineral deposits. What took millions of years to form, we are consuming in just decades. Continued extraction not only depletes resources, it also pushes us deeper underground, raising costs and lowering the quality of minerals we obtain. 
That's why conserving minerals is not a choice, but a necessity. We must adopt sustainable mining practices, develop technologies to use low-grade ores efficiently, and most importantly, recycle metals and use substitutes wherever possible. Minerals are valuable, but short-lived possessions. By using them wisely today, we can secure a stronger, safer and greener tomorrow. Energy powers our lives, from cooking at home to running industries, lighting cities and driving vehicles. Without energy, no activity is possible. India depends on a wide range of energy sources, both conventional and non-conventional. Coal is India's most abundant fossil fuel and the backbone of its energy needs. Formed from compressed plant material, coal occurs in many types, from low-grade peat and lignite to bituminous and the hard anthracite. Major Gondwana coal fields include Jaria, Raniganj, and Bokaro, while tertiary coals are found in the northeast. Petroleum fuels transport, provides raw material for industry, and powers households. Found in anticlines and fault traps, oil reserves are concentrated in Mumbai High, Gujarat, and Assam, with Digboy being India's oldest oil field. Natural gas, found with petroleum deposits, is a versatile and cleaner fuel. It powers industries, electricity generation, vehicles as CNG, and households as PNG. India's major reserves lie in Mumbai High and the Krishna Godavari Basin. Electricity is considered an index of development. Hydroelectricity, produced by fast-flowing water, is renewable and clean. Major projects include Bakra Nangal and Damodar Valley, Thermal electricity, on the other hand, depends on non-renewable fossil fuels like coal, petroleum and gas. Coal, oil, gas, hydro, nuclear and renewables together fuel India's growth. But only with sustainable choices today can we power a brighter, cleaner tomorrow. Rising demand and pollution from fossil fuels push us toward non-conventional energy. India is blessed with sunlight, wind, water and biomass making it a leader in renewable development. Nuclear energy comes from altering the structure of atoms. Uranium from Jharkhand and thorium from Kerala's monazite sands power India's reactors. Major stations include Tarapur, Kalpakam and Rawatbata. India's tropical climate makes solar energy a powerful alternative. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight into electricity. Rural solar projects are reducing dependence on firewood and dung cakes. India is one of the world leaders in wind power. The largest clusters are in Tamil Nadu, from Nagarkoil to Madurai. Other states include Gujarat, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Biogas plants turn cattle dung and organic waste into clean energy. Known as Gobar gas plants, they provide both cooking fuel and high-quality manure. Tidal power projects are possible in the Gulf of Kambat, Gulf of Kach and Sundarbans. Geothermal projects exist in Himachal Pradesh's Manikaran and Ladakh's Puga Valley, harnessing Earth's heat for electricity. Energy saved is energy produced. India's growing economy demands sustainable energy use through conservation, renewables and efficiency. Citizens can help too by switching off unused appliances, using public transport and adopting power-saving devices. Coal, oil, gas, hydro, nuclear and renewables together fuel India's growth. But only with sustainable choices today can we power a brighter, cleaner tomorrow.